Hi, good evening. Tanong niyo na ba kung ano nangyari sa last 24 hours si Jesus Christ? Alam niyo, it started with the Last Supper. And then, sa garden, nagpray siya sa garden of Gethsemane, penetration ni Judas, and then, yung the trial, yung super stressful na trial. Yun yung pag-uusapan natin ngayong gabi. And then, after noon, crucifixion. And then, sa Sunday, pag-uusapan natin yung the resurrection. Tanong, what comes to your mind when we talk about a trial court? Of course, there's a judge, di ba? Dito sa US, mayroong jury. And of course, yung two opposing lawyers, yung the defendant and the prosecutor. Speaking of lawyers, I remember a story about the two doctors and a lawyer boarded a, fly, a flight out of Manila to Los Angeles. Alam niyo, minsan may professional, uh, kumbaga, iringan itong dalawa ito eh, mga doktor at mga lawyers. One doctor sat in the window seat, the other sat in the middle seat. Just before the takeoff, an attorney got on and took the aisle seat next to the two physicians. The attorney kicked off his shoes, wiggled his toes, and uh, was settling in when the physician in the window seat said, I think I'll get up and get a coat. Eh, mabait naman tong lawyer since nandun siya sa aisle. No problem, said the attorney. I'll get it for you. While he was gone, one of the physicians picked up the attorney's shoe and spot him. Ew. When he returned with the coke, the other physician said, That looks good. I, I think I'll have one too. Again, the attorney obligingly uh, went to fetch it. And uh, while he was gone, the other physician picked up the other shoe and spat in it. The attorney returned and they all sat back and enjoyed the flight. As the plane was landing, the attorney slipped his feet into his shoes and knew immediately what had happened. Galit na galit si attorney. How long must this go on? He asked. This fighting between our professions, this hatred between lawyers and doctors, this animosity, this must stop, this spitting in shoes and pissing in cokes. <laughs> Have you ever been in a trial court? As a former human resources manager, the trial I am familiar with is the labor department hearings I attended because of my company's involvement in a labor legal dispute. Ramiro, this is when an employee wishes to file a case against his previous employer, and I will be subpoenaed to settle the case in front of a labor arbiter. The last we went to the Samay Banao in Quezon City. We will present evidences and documents before the arbiter, and if we fail to agree with each other, then a formal labor case will be filed in the court of law. It was messy, chaotic, and most of the times, the end result is a feeling of ill will towards one another. For me, it's just work, nothing personal, but honestly, sometimes it gets into you and you get affected. I mean, the problem about uh, being in a ministry, I, I can't say that ministering to people, shepherding, counseling, marrying, burying, is not personal. Uh, I love officiating weddings. Now, I remember three years ago, uh, I experienced a wedding in a funeral. Same day, beautiful wedding, joyful, sobrang saya, extremes. Sa gabi, punta naman ako ng funeral. I thought that was just in, a, in movies no, na nangyayari. A pastoring is just a work for me like our daily 9 to 5. Then call me the worst pastor ever. Kasi for me, my faith is personal. My God is personal. Serving for His glory for me is personal. Personal lang to. Di lang basta trabaho. Kumbaga. Jesus made it personal as He decided to leave the comfort of His throne to die for us and personally save us, right? Amen? He made it personal when he allowed his hands to be dirty. Imagine as he molded the mud and formed it according to his image and likeness. Of all his creations, imagine, no? let there be, let there be, let there be. He just uttered words. For us, it became personal for him. He used his beautiful, clean hands. The trial. Probably it was personal for Barabbas, Anas, Caiaphas, the entire Sanhedrin, and probably just part of their work or trabaho lang for Pilate or Herod. I doubt it. Mga personal din yan. What are our goals for today? 
First off, we will revisit the epic drama of the child. We will once and for all get to know who are the main characters in this grand conspiracy, and we will identify how we will relate our present lives in this beautiful story. The trial of Jesus. Game ka na ba? Do you know, alam niyo ba that Jesus went through six trials? Six agonizing trials. Six agonizing trials. He had three religious trials where he was supposedly arbitrated in accordance through the eyes of their faith and belief in God. Hindi naman nangyari. And uh, another three civil trials, supposedly, he was judged sana in accordance of the rule of law. Hindi rin nangyari. So what happened? Under religious trials, dinila siya kay Anas, sa harapan ni Kayapas, at sa kaharapan ng mga Sanhedrin. Under civil trial, dinila siya sa harapan ni Pilato, sa harapan ni Herod, at sa pabalik, binalik siya ulit kay Pilato. Let us revisit the larger-than-life drama of the trial. Let's open or turn on our Bibles to John 18, 12-24. Sa harapan ni Anas, ano nangyari? So, unang-unang pinagdalhan sa kanya kay Anas. So, the band of uh, soldiers and their captain and the officers of the Jews arrested Jesus and bound him. Verse 13, First, they led him to Anas. Sino to si Anas? For he was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was high priest that year. Verse 14, it was Caiaphas who had advised the Jews, that it would be expedient that one man should die for the people. Kamag-anak incorporated. Ay, my goodness. He was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, si Anas. Eh, what good judgment you'll get from a related people ganging up on you. Eh, bias to mga to at very subjective. Iro mo, kay Anas pa lang, si Anas maangas, talo na. Eh kasi kamag-anak niya pala si Kaya pa, si susunod na judge. Eh sino ba ito si Anas? Anas, alam naman natin, he appears in the gospel as a high priest before whom Jesus is brought for judgment ng bago daling kay Pontius Pilate. Si Anas, 23 years older kay Jesus. So mga 56 siya during the trial. And after 40 years namatay siya. After the trial, no? 40 years after the trial. Anas officially served as high priest for 10 years. Alam niyo ba, no? uh, while having been officially removed from office, he remained as one of the nation's most influential political and social individual. Siyempre, he aided greatly by the use of his five sons and his son-in-law na si Kaya Pas na puppet high priest. Ay nako, after ni Anas, dinala siya kay Kaya Pas. Let's open our Bibles to uh, Matthew 26, 57 to 68. In uh, verse uh, 57, Then those who had seized Jesus led him to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the scribes and the elders had gathered. 58. And Peter was following him at a distance, as far as the courtyard of the high priest. And going inside, he sat with the guards to see the end. Oh, interesting, kasi nandito si Peter. Now, the chief priests and the whole council were seeking false testimony against Jesus that they might put him to death. So, sinis set up talaga siya. Verse 60, but they found none. Though many false witnesses came forward, at last two came forward, 61, and said, This man said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and to rebuild it in three days. And the high priest stood up and said, Have you no answer to make? What is it that this man testify against you? But Jesus remained silent. And the high priest said to him, I adjure you by the living God. Tell us if you are the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus said to him, You have said so. But I tell you, from now on you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his robes and said, He has uttered blasphemy. 
what further witnesses do we need? You have now heard his blasphemy. What is your judgment? They answered, he deserves death. Then they spit in his face and struck him. And some slapped him, saying, prophesy to us, you Christ. Who is it that struck you? Whew, what a story. Well, I mean, it was in between Jesus' transfer from Annas to Caiaphas that Peter betrayed Jesus, and Jesus was able to look at Peter in the eye. Peter was in the courtyard in between the two offices where Annas, former high priest, and Caiaphas, current high priest, held the office. So then this is Peter. In yung time na binitray siya. Joseph Caiaphas, sino naman to? After kay Annas, nila kay Caiaphas. No, known simply as Caiaphas in the New Testament, he was the Jewish high priest who is said to have organized the plot to kill Jesus. Caiaphas is also said to have been involved in the Sanhedrin trial of Jesus. So, Anas, Caiaphas, and then dinala siya sa Sanhedrin. Matthew 27, 1-2. Anong sabi dito? Ano nangyari? Tingnan natin. In verse 27, When morning came, all the chief priests and the elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. No? At chapter 27, verse 1, and then in verse 2, And they bound him and led him away and delivered him over to Pilate, the governor. Alam nyo, the Sanhedrin trial refers to the trial before a Jewish judicial body. So parang jury to. After the betrayal and the arrest of Jesus, he is taken to the Sanhedrin. Ano ba itong Sanhedrin na to? From a historical perspective, we need to understand ang Sanhedrin body was just an ad hoc gathering uh, rather than a fixed court. Hindi to fixed court. Kumbaga, pansamantala lang. Ad hoc means it was just newly formed, arranged, or done for a particular purpose only. In the four Gospels, Jesus was tried and condemned by a majority of the Sanhedrin members. Although at least one member, remember Joseph of Arimathea, disputed from this decision. Si Joseph din, naalala niyo, siya yung bumili ng tomb. Siya yung rich man na sinasabi na bumili ng pinaglibingan kay Jesus. Jesus was mocked and beaten and condemned for making the claim of being the Son of God. Now, tingnan natin, no? here are some of the illegalities no? of that Jewish trials. Ano ba yung mga illegal na ginawa nila? Kasi, if a man was arrested for a capital crime, sa standpoint of the law, malamang ang kaso ni Jesus was treason. He, he could never be arrested that night. Bakit? It had to be in a broad daylight. Ang, ang arrest ni Jesus nangyari mga 1 or 2 o'clock ng madaling araw. Do you know that the members of the Jewish court, after hearing the testimony of two witnesses in a capital crime like treason, they could not immediately act and judge kasi meron silang dapat sundin na protocol. No? Kaya nga illegal eh. They were to go home after dapat nila marinig yung kanilang uh, witnesses and remain alone and separate from one another for two days. Thinking about the testimonies they had heard. So pagbubulay-bulayan pa nila dapat. During the time, here's what they were to do. Here's the language nga of the code. Pero sila sinasabi na eat like food, drink like wines, sleep well. Kumain, minom, at ulog. And once again, return and hear the testimony of the accused. Para walang biases. Then, and only then, shall you render a vote dapat. They didn't do that. No, they, the Jewish court, never left the presence of Caiaphas. Hindi na sila umuwi. Kasi ang gusto nilang idiin si Jesus. The three trials were conducted in order to attempt to condemn Jesus to death on religious grounds. Ayaw na nila paratingin sana. Itong pa lang sa religious court pa lang dapat uh, pwede na patayin si Jesus. But even if they could prove that Jesus had broken religious law, 
they still did not have the authority to put him to death. Bakit? Kasi, tandaan nyo, ang Israel nun, under the Roman government. At may tinatawag silang uh, praetor, or uh, yung Roman governor, ang pangalan niya si Pilate. Sino naman tong Pilato na to? Alala ko palagi eh. Pag sinasabi, oh, sino na naman yung Poncio Pilato kasama mo? Alala niyo po ba yun? So, tapos na yung religious trial niya. Tingnan natin yung civil trial niya. Yung religious trial kay Anas, kay Kayapas, and sa Sanhedrin. Dito sa civil trial, dinala siya kay Pilate, dinala siya kay Herod, and then dinala siya ulit kay Pilate. Ano nangyari? Tingnan natin. The time was around 6.30 to 7 o'clock in the morning. Imagine no, yung puyat, yung lack of sleep, hunger, and fatigue experienced by Jesus. Grabe. No? Where was Jesus' civil trial held? Dinala siya sa praetorium. Ito yung official residence of the Roman governor. Noong time natin, may tinatawag din tayong ano eh, ang gobernador general ng panahon ng Kastila sa Pilipinas na merong tinatawag na governor palace na sa Manila. Doon nakatira yung governor general na assigned ng Spain sa kanyang uh, uh, sinasakupan ng Philippines. Ganun din to. Yung Rome may in-assign na governor general doon sa Israel. Yung Roman governor na to, nakatira sa praetorium. Doon, doon siya uh, dinala si Jesus Christ. Ngayon, sino to si Pontius Pilate? No? Who is Pontius Pilate or Pontius Pilatos? Siya yung Roman governor ng Judea from 26 to 36 AD. Ay, sino nga ba ito? Pontius Pilato na to. Ang technical title niya sa position niya is Prefect of Judea. A prefect was a leader of uh, 500 to 1,000 military troops. The office involved military, financial, and judicial responsibilities. So, makapangyarihan. Pilate projects himself as cruel and tyrant, while the Gospels present him as a weak and easily swayed ruler. So, iba talaga ang integrity kesa sa image. These varying positions may be reconciled by considering Pilate's relationship to Roman leaders. Alam nyo, Pilate is a man-pleaser. The, Phar the Pharisees and Sadducees were trying to convince Pilate that Jesus was mounting an insurrection against the Roman government by proclaiming to be king. So, inuuto nila si Pilate na Kumbaga, inuudyokan. Nako eh, king daw to. Eh, isa lang naman ang king natin. Isa lang naman ang emperor natin. Si Caesar eh. Bakit eh? Kumbaga, do something about this, Pilate. He's a threat. After his first interview, it became obvious to Pilate that Jesus had not, had not done anything wrong. But he didn't want to anger the Jews for fear that they would riot or worst report him to Caesar. Why? Kasi nga, he is a man-pleaser. When he found out that Jesus was from Galilee, nakakuha siya ng butas. Eh, taga-Galilee ka pala eh. He sent him instead to Herod, who had jurisdiction on that area. He passed the buck. Eh, di ba, sign of fertility yun. Walang silbe. He was a useless leader. No, simply lang po naman ang, ang decision. Ang hirap ba mag-decide? You should have simply liberated Jesus for lack of evidence. Tapos. May kaso nga. Futile. Hmm? Then, let's look at the fifth trial. Before he wrote, Jesus was quiet. He did not say a single word in fulfillment of the prophecy. Ano nangyari? At sino naman itong si Herod? Who is Herod? Is he the same king, Herod, who wanted Jesus dead as a baby? Actually, that was his dad. No, We're talking about Herod Antipas. Yung gustong pumatay noon kay, kay Jesus bilang baby at yung nagpatawag na sa, sa mga magi, sa, sa mga magi, eh si Herod the Great yun, tatay ni Herod Antipas. Alam niyo, si Herod the Great, after his death, The Romans divided his kingdom among three of his sons and his sister. Antipas was a son of Herod the Great, who had become king of Judea, 
who was from Samaria. Alam niyo, Southerner siya, kumbaga, Bisayan. He, uh, here he's like from uh, from San Diego sa South. Ito kumbaga sa California. Si Jesus naman, Northerner, kumbaga parang Ilocano. Uh, dito naman, kumbaga sa California, para siyang taga San Francisco, parang ganun. In Luke's Gospel, uh, Nazareth is first described as a city of Galilee. And alam naman natin na taga dito si Mary. Kaya tinawag si Jesus na uh, Jesus the Nazarene. No? Nazareth is now occupied mostly of Arabs. Si Joseph naman from Bethlehem, city of David. Ang Bethlehem is a Palestinian city located in the central west bank, Palestine, about 10 kilometers south of Jerusalem. Kung saan usually nagkakagulo ngayon dahil pinag-aagawan yung pwesto na yan. Yan yung picture nun. So here at Antipast is best known today for his role in events that led to the execution of John the Baptist and siyempre ni Jesus. Si, si, si Herod, ewan ko naaalala nyo, no? si Antipas divorced his first wife in favor of Herodias, who had formerly been married to his half-brother, Herod II. Ang gulo, no? Ang tatay nila, si Herod the Great. Siya, si Herod Antipas. Ang kapatid niya, si Herod II, na ang asawa, si Herodias. At ginawa niyang, you know, mistress. Si Hispano. It was John the Baptist condemnation of this arrangement that led Antipas to have him arrested and John was put to death. Don't you remember yung, yung, yung an, an, anak ni Herodia, sumayaw, natuwa si, John, si, si Antipas, sabi niya, o oh, anong gusto mong hilangin dahil natuwa ako doon sa entertainment. At si Herodias, sabi niya, hingin mo yung ulo ni John the Baptist. Kaya yun, napatay si John the Baptist. Anyway, the Gospel of Luke states that Jesus was first brought before Pontius Pilate for trial since Pilate was the governor of Roman Judea which encompassed the Jerusalem where Jesus was arrested. So, after noon, Pilate initially handed him over to Antipas no? in whose territory Jesus had been most active, but Antipas sent him back to Pilate's court. Ayo. This is stressful for Jesus. But throughout all these illegal trials, Jesus re remains calm. He did not break under pressure. Pilate felt the pressure and had to wash his hands. He could not stand up in the midst of adversity. Let's all learn from Pilate's mistake. Ano ba yung pwede natin matutunan sa mga pagkakamali ni Pilato? Alam niyo, he had the problem with foundation eh. Pansin ko. Alam niyo, if a groundwork as a believer were compromised, expect a collapse. Sigurado, collapse. A collapse in morality, decision-making, and a collapse in our integrity. Pag strong ang house at weak ang foundation, sigurado magko-collapse. There are Christians now who are confused whether they will be pro or against on some certain issues. Do we abort a child or not? Do we need to give these tithes or not? Do we watch porn or not? Do we go to church or not? Do we need to obey and respect our parents or not? Do I smoke or not? Do I file for divorce or not? Do I copy from my classmate or not? Do I pay the movie or not? Do I use pirated materials like Microsoft or not? Do I bring ball pens from the office or not? Do I pay my taxes or not? Do I need to serve God or not? Mga kapatid, let Christ be our cornerstone, rock of our salvation, the ultimate foundation. Napansin ko rin si Pilate, no, si Herod. They, ha they had problem with futility. Our uselessness will be highlighted if we intend to be a person being of no use. Alam nyo, 
we compromise to the world as we we are of this world. Nowadays, we see no difference between people who rejects God and people who supposed to live a Christ-like life. So, Mr. Romans 12, 2, the Bible is clearly, the Bible is clear in saying, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good and pleasing and perfect will. Pansin ko rin, si Pilate he had a problem with fear. Washing of hands, pleasing man rather than pleasing God will lead to anxiety. He wants to please the Roman Empire, the people of Israel, but never the God he sentenced to death. How many times we try to please the people around us, our bosses, our peers, our relatives, neighbors, churchmates, Facebook friends, yet we can even complete a first Sunday church attendance to please our God. We remember our God if there's a need for God. He's like a medicine cabinet for us. And we only open it as the need arises. We can conquer fear if we are in tune with fear, with the fear extinguisher. Hello, right? His name is Jesus, the King of all kings and the Lord of all lords. He is the Lord of love. First John 4, 18, there is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. Pansin ko rin, he had a problem with failure. Like Pilate, we wish not to disappoint the people around us. One of our greatest fears is actually failure. Let me remind you what the Bible says. We are victors in Christ. Romans 8.37, no. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. So what if we fail? Let's learn from it. Move on and put all your trust in him. Hold on to his promises like Philippians 1.6. Being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry, on, carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Pansin ko rin kay Pilate, he had a problem with focus. Single-mindedness. No sense of purpose. Lack of vision. No, it leads to being perished. Alam nyo, sa Proverbs 29.18, sabi doon, where there is no prophetic vision, the people cast off restraint. But blessed is he who keeps the law. Pansin ko rin kay, kay Pilate. No? Uh, Napaka out of focus yung tao. Parang tayo, Pilot is like us. We are very focused on our plans. The Bible says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Sinagot na ng Bible. We should be focused. Focused on God first. So you can focus on all of your concerns, such as health, finances, relationships, Spiritual growth, ministry, career, parenting, leadership, etc., etc. Seek ye first. There will always be twists and turns along life's winding pathway. But like Jesus, we must have grace under pressure. I mean, you and I deserve the spit. No? That spit. We deserve the nails in his feet and hands. It's our sin he bore, not his. It's our place he took, not the Father's. We are the guilty ones, sa lang. We are like sheep gone astray, turn everyone to our own ways. We are the rebels, just like Barabbas. Our iniquity has separated us from God, not His. But the message in all of this is because of love. He did it for us. He became sin for us. Allow me to end with this intriguing story of someone's experience. A minister of God 
didn't have anyone to work with. So he asked God to make him available to whatever would be his will. He checked the Manila Bulletin, classified ads, because he needed some money. He saw there was a driving job made available to him. So he worked as a uh, Tamarao FX driver in Manila. Alala ko tuloy FX na lahat ko din drive sa Manila. Alam niyo, if you know anything about Manila prior to the Isko Moreno uh, uh, era, it's not the recta divisoria area you want to drive an FX. But that's where they had the need. He found out later it was because nobody else would stay on the job. So he drove it. No? Magulo kasi yung area before ni Mayor Isko. Alam yo, before a week passed, some thugs got on the FX and didn't pay. They sat in the back, sneered and jeered and mocked him. The next day, the same thing happened. The third day, it happened again. Uh, mga na to. After it went on for about a week, he decided he didn't have to put up with that. So he decided to call an officer inside his FX and make them pay. So tinulungan siya ng police. He saw one down about the block and after he got on, he told the officer that the fellows back there haven't paid for several days. Would you at least make them pay today? And he did. But unfortunately, the officer got off the public utility vehicle somewhere in Tayuman. When the door was closed, the driver drove a little further and turned a corner. And that was the last thing he remembered. They knocked a couple of teeth out of his head. They stole his money and when he woke up, the FX was empty. He sat there in confusion and disillusionment, wondering, what kind of ministry is this, Lord? I told you I was available and this was the job you opened up. And he went home, turned the FX in, and took the rest of the day off. He stared up at the ceiling as he was nursing his wounds, and he thought, I'm not going to let them get away with that. So through an interesting chain of events, they rounded up with the help of some officers. The same teens were arrested and they took them to court. The day of the hearing, he stood before the court and the judge listened carefully and decided the kids were guilty. And they didn't have any money to buy their way out, so they had to spend some time in jail. Suddenly, the minister realized, here's my chance, he said. Uh, Your Honor, um, may I speak for a few moments? The judge, the judge said, yes, you may. The minister said, I'd like for you to tally, tally up all, the, all of the time these fellows together would be spending in jail. And I'd like to go in their behalf. And the judge responded, well, that's highly irregular. It has never been done before. And the minister responded, oh, yes, your honor, it has. About 2,000 years ago. And then in about four minutes, he gave them the gospel. Three of the young men came to know Christ on the spot. One of them later, after the minister was incarcerated. That pastor was having a ministry with those four guys who had, who heard the message that somebody else wanted to pay the price for their sin. A living testimony for what Jesus did for us. When we are challenged in life, we have opportunities to do the right. We have the opportunities to do the right thing and raise the standard for Christ. Antano, are we self-pleasers? Are we like Peter the aggressive, Judas, Anas, Caiaphas, 
the Sanhedrin, Barabbas? Are we man-pleasers like Pilate, Herod Antipas? Are we God-pleasers like Joseph of Arimathea? Or Peter the Rock, who were changed by God? If we will be put today under trial, how do we plead? Is it guilty or not guilty? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you for reminding us that we are guilty of something. And for tonight, we would like to ask for forgiveness. If there's anything that we said, we did, or we, we thought of that is not pleasing to your sight, we ask for forgiveness. We repent to you. And uh, we wish to turn away from our sins, Lord God. Help us. And Lord, also bless your people. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. God bless you guys. Happy Wednesday, happy midweek, and uh, happy Easter on Sunday. Hope you have a great week ahead of you. Happy, uh, can we say happy Lenten season? <laughs> but uh, I hope you're all safe and healthy. God bless you all. Thank you.